Welcome, everybody. This is For the Love of Money, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success by sharing the tools, tips, and stories of those who have already made it. My name is Chris Harder, and each week I will bring you incredible guests in order to prove that when good people make good money, they do great things. pumped for today's episode because it's with one of my buddies, one of my newer friends, and I just instantly loved this dude. Sterling Griffin is the founder of the Wealthy Coach Academy, and he went from homeless to a half a million dollars and growing in just months. And he tells you exactly how he did it, how he was feeling, how he got over those hurdles, what to do when you're down and out, where to start, where to turn. He's full of amazing quotes, and he leaves you with pure inspiration. So let's dive in and get started. All right, Sterling, my man, I am so grateful to have you on. How you doing? Man, I'm fired up. (laughs) You're always fired up. I've never seen you in the short time I've known you to not be fired up. I kind of like that. Thanks, man. I don't think there's any more fun way to live. It's like it's a like energy is a choice. So I choose it energy is it all right you know what we're done boom we can, everyone can hang up now like that's all they need to know energy is a choice and so why not choose it that's the that might be the best nugget that we're going to pull out today no i'm just kidding we're going to pull out some awesome stuff so sterling listen this is why i wanted to have you on you went from homeless to earning a half a million dollars a year and the trajectory you're on is going to far exceed that quite honestly but as of right now you went from homeless to a half a million dollars a year in less than a year so you have got to tell us that story yeah, man, I'm excited to share. So let's start with um, describe to me what homeless means because people are going to hear this and they're going to be like, no, nah, dude wasn't really homeless. Maybe he's just down and out or something. Describe homeless. Sure. So homeless for me was I had just ended like a year and a half ago. I was just ending a lease um, at a place in like a small apartment. It was like four of us that were in a two bedroom apartment. I was barely making the payments on that. At the time, I was a struggling door-to-door salesman, okay? I don't know if you've ever done door-to-door sales or anyone listening has, but it's a tough job, and it's not only a tough job. Like, I wasn't very good at it, so I wasn't making much money. But when that lease ended in October of 2015, I didn't have enough money to, like, go anywhere else. I didn't have enough money really to even stay there and sign a new lease. So I ended up just going from couch to couch with people that I would call at different times like, hey, can I stay on your couch? Can I stay on your floor? Because I had no money to stay anywhere myself. If I didn't have somewhere to stay, I would sleep in my car. Okay. And this happened several times. And so I remember on New Year's Eve like of 2016 or 20, New Year's Eve 2015 going into 2016 that I had nowhere to stay that night. And luckily I went to a church and I was just sharing that, hey, I'm homeless tonight. Like I'm just going to sleep in my car. And a friend invited me to stay with her that night. I mean, this is just what it was. Like, I didn't know each day where I would stay that night. That's what homeless was for me. Blows my mind. Door-to-door salesman is brutal. And like you said, you know, you weren't making much money at it. Unfortunately, most people don't make much money doing that. You couldn't make ends meet. You couldn't pay for a lease. You're literally couch surfing and sleeping in your car sometimes. So, you know, when people think they're down and out, when people feel like, oh, you know, my situation doesn't allow me to chase my dreams. My situation doesn't allow me to have anything extra. What do you say to those people because you were at rock bottom? Well, what I say is this, is that money is never the problem. Like a lack of money is never the problem. A lack of resourcefulness is the problem. So for me, my problem wasn't that I didn't have enough money to pay the bills. It's that I wasn't being creative in my helping others so that I could get paid and then pay my own bills that way. So for anyone out there that's struggling just like I was, or maybe they're at a great level in life and they wanna push further, realize that you're lacking the income, the funds right now, whatever your situation is, that's not an issue. The money you have around you is a reflection of your mindset, of what, like, what level of abundance you're willing to accept into your life and willing to create for others. God, this is so good. Okay, so I'll, let's take that resourcefulness word and let's run with that. Okay. Were you always this positive even when you were couch surfing and sleeping <laughs> in your car or, or did you have like some kind of, you know, moment or first inspiration? Like how did you go from 
New Year's Eve this past year, not having anywhere to stay to saying, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to make it work? Yeah, it's such a it's such a great question. Even as you asked it, I'm like laughing to myself, thinking like, have I always been so positive? Heck no. In fact, 2015 was like the year of woe is me. It's like, why has this always happened to me? Like basically the questions driving my life caused me to feel like crap about myself all the time. But the shift came when I saw, a fr- and I think that inspiration in general, when someone's inspired, it comes from seeing someone else do something great. And then thinking to yourself, oh, I could do that too. So I had a friend who was running a very simple but profitable online coaching business helping people get into great shape. And I saw him. He was in a – we were in this online business community together. I didn't have a business or anything, but I was interested in it. And I saw him running a business that was profitable. I thought to myself – and he wasn't like like a shredded guy. He wasn't like super fit or anything. He was just like helping a few people at $1,000 for eight weeks worth of coaching just like transform their body. I thought to myself, well, if he can do it, then there's no reason why I can't do it. Like a year prior to that, I'd like really focused on transforming my body. And I thought if I did it for myself, then I can certainly help someone else do it. So the shift came for me and just seeing that if they can do it, I can do it. And, and that's what I hope that anyone listening to this or when you listen to other people's podcasts or you read other inspirational books, like, let that be the effect that sinks in. You know, that's what I try and do for myself is like, I try and say, if they can do it, then I can do it. That's incredible. Do you know this guy today? Like, does he have any idea that he was this spark that turned you into this entrepreneurial monster? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, um, we're still friends. Yeah. We're friends. And like, sometimes we do business together. Like we, sh- we promote each other's audiences. He's an awesome guy. His name's Ryan Clark. And he's an amazing coach still to this day. And this is definitely his future as well. So he was a big a source of inspiration to me in the beginning. I love it. You know, right there is, a, is an example of for the love of money, right? What this podcast is all about. He was successful in making money and that inspired somebody else to get out of being homeless and to take action and go change life. So we're going to just shelve that for a minute before we get into, you know, the, cool. the wonderful butterfly effect of helping people once you're successful. Right now, I want to take it from he was your inspiration and you thought, okay, why can't I have an online coaching business? What was next? Yeah. So at that point, the first question that entered into my mind was, well, just because Ryan did it and I could do it, what do I need to do to like make sure I'm qualified? My mind instantly went to, am I qualified enough to do this? And so I was like, do I need to get a certification or do I need to, you know, go train underneath some coach for a while before I can coach? Do I need to like figure out all the stuff around fitness? Cause I had never made a fitness plan or a diet plan. I never was a personal trainer or anything like that. So I'm thinking to myself, what are all the ways in which I need to qualify myself? That's what my mind went to. So as soon as I heard, here's the, here's the distinction. As soon as I heard that he did it and I thought, well, maybe I can do it. My next stop in my mindset was, well, here's all the reasons why not right now. Right. And, and so what I had to do first was I had to have a conversation with Ryan and I said, what do I need to do to get this started? And he said this, he said, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make a post on Facebook invite people into a program with you. Just make up the name of the program, make up that you know, you'll help people with doing this, this, and this so they can transfer from their body and then get on the phone with them. So that's literally what I did. The next month in December of 2015, after I had this conversation with him in November, what I did was, and I had just had it, and this is an important part of the story, Chris, I actually had an ACL surgery. So ACL, like a, like a anterior cruciate ligament in your knee, I'd had a surgery where I was lying on my back, I was watching my knee, rise up and down day after day, like just a few days out of the surgery. And I thought to myself, I really need to make some money right now. And I can't even go do my door to door sales job that I'm not that good at to make more money because I'm injured. So it's like in this moment, I've got to make something happen. So I will. So I remember I was just lying there like, and I wrote up this post on Facebook. I put a picture of my transformation. Like here's where I was before. And here's where I was after I started working out and getting in good shape. And I said, hey, if you'd like to join my body transformation program, I've got four spots available. And you just send me a message by applying or commenting below. I'll reach out and I'll see if you're a good fit. And it's like that was my that was my step. It wasn't like going and creating a website. It wasn't going and making business cards. It wasn't even like putting together a nutrition plan. My mindset was, I, first of all, I need the money because I need to pay my bills. I need to eat tomorrow. But also, I will sell the program. I'll offer it. See who wants to buy it. And then – I'll create it. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how I can deliver powerfully. 
And so I made that post. Remember, it was on a Friday. It was December 12th, 2015. And the next day, I closed my first package of coaching for $1,000. <laughs> what did that feel like in that moment? You're from it was busted like, it was like the greatest. Bucks. It was like the greatest moment ever. Because because what that is like, and and entrepreneurs have this experience. I feel it's that moment of first making money from essentially nothing, like making moment from no, making money from nothing. It was like money just appeared in my bank account, and it was for something that hadn't even been created yet. And th- in that moment, I'm like, oh this is not only possible, this is what I will give my life to do. Not just to, it wasn't about making money. It was about like creating transformation in the lives of others. That client who went, who paid me that went on to lose 32 pounds in the next 12 weeks. They were a thrilled client. And it was like, not because I knew everything that I needed to know about fitness in that moment, but as soon as they paid me, but because my mindset was what I don't know, I can figure out whatever I come across. I don't know. I can still figure it out. And, and actually, like a funny aside to this, shout out to my brother who was a certified personal trainer because what I did was out of that $1,000, because I didn't know how to make plans, man. Like I really didn't know how to make a workout plan, nutrition plan, nothing. What I did was I said, hey, Ryan, I'll give you 200 bucks if you put these plans together for this client and just like show me how to do it when you make this plan. <laughs> and so like I literally had my brother do the work for it. <laughs> he put together the whole package and I just got on the phone with, with this client and just week after week I would coach him on a quick phone call. That's brilliant. So you collect a thousand, you pay out 200, you profited 800 in a field that you literally didn't even know anything about. Nothing, literally yeah. nothing. That's the epitome of being a natural born entrepreneur right there. I love it. All right. So you said something that I don't want to skip over because here's where mm-hmm. people get stuck. Yeah. You said you made the decision to do it. If Ryan can do it, why not me? And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, the voices popped up in your head, all the reasons why you couldn't. Talk us yeah. through that. Yeah. I, and it's like anytime you face an opportunity, I, I, or I'll say for me, I, I'll just say for myself, anytime I face a new opportunity that's going to cause me to step into a version of myself which doesn't yet exist, that would cause me to grow, to become better, there's always reasons why not? And reasons why not are just simply fear. Let's say that's really all it is. It's like, it's fear. It's the fear. I'm not good enough. It's the fear. I'll be found out as a fraud. It's the fear. I'm going to fail and be rejected. All those things come up. And I think that it's, it's totally normal. And in fact, like if we look at our minds from 2 million years ago, which essentially our minds are designed to live in a world 2 million years ago where, where our biggest motive would just, just be to survive, like not be eaten by like giant animals in the wilderness. They're designed to keep us alive. And so whenever we experience a, a moment where we can step into the unknown, we step into a moment where change is going to happen, it's in that moment where our two million-year-old brains are trying to keep us safe. And so they try and move us away from the thing which will mean change. But in today's world, change doesn't mean get eaten by a T-Rex, <laughs> right? Right. In today's world, oftentimes change, especially in this particular instance, meant like becoming a better version of myself. It meant like trying something which could lead to a very different life, not just for me, but for all the people that I help. And so now, like a shift that I made like a couple months before that, which was very, very important, Chris, and I feel like I learned this from Tim Ferriss, actually. And Tim Ferriss had this moment when he was trying to like go on dates, go on more dates with attractive women. He... He used this as a, as a test. Like whenever he would see a woman in public that he found attractive, he would feel fear in his body. Like if he found a woman that he was attracted that he wanted to talk to, he would notice fear happen. When he saw women that weren't attractive to him, he wouldn't feel the fear. So what he decided to do to break through his fear is that just any time he would see a woman that he was attracted to, he would approach her every single time. It didn't matter what the situation was. He would just go up and start talking to her and whether or not He would continue the conversation after that, like get her phone number, go on a date or whatever. It didn't matter. He was trying to break himself free of that fear just by using the fear as an indicator of what to move towards rather than away from. Wow, that's that's absolutely incredible. So I'm sitting here listening to you and you're brilliant. And the crowd probably or the listeners probably don't know. You're just 25 years old. Where does this (laughs) brilliance come from? 
Wow, there's like no way to answer that question without sounding like a chotch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just go for it. We won't judge you. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much, Chris. Like, I, I admire, I admire you for so many reasons that I've told you before. But brilliance, you know, the thing is, is like I don't think of myself as brilliant or smarter than anyone else. Like, I think that the way a person becomes smart is they become coachable. Like for me, I'm just hungry always to learn. Like I'm always looking for what's the next book? What's the next like seminar? What's the next insight that I can use and not just hear it? Cause I think the difference between people that are like, that know a lot and people that are intelligent, the, that intelligent people actually live or do something that they hear will benefit their life. I think the intelligence just means that you take actions that are different or maybe that's wisdom. Yeah, wisdom, wisdom. Wisdom means that you take action with what you know rather than just like storing it in your head. Like a bunch of books on a bookshelf don't really do your life any good. Like putting the book's information into your mind and then living from it, that actually helps you. So I think that like for anyone that wants to become smart, because I definitely wasn't always smart. Like I was the kid that was failing in school. I was the I was the underachiever in high school. Like I wanted to play football. And I think that didn't you play football too, Chris? Yep. You play football too. So in high school, I, I played football, quote, and that's in quotes. I'm putting up hands to do in quotes. I played football because I was the guy that I was warm in the bench every single game. <laughs> Me too. You, you were too? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's like I loved suiting up in the uniform. I felt like I bought the nice Under Armour to wear underneath my, underneath my pads, and I, had the, I literally had the cleats that had my name written on them. And uh, it's because, like, I, I had all the looks, but I had no substance at that time. Like <laughs> I, I was the super underachiever in everything. So I think that like anyone who wants to make a difference, make an impact and make great income, like it, the biggest thing that you can decide to do is like be coachable, be a learner, and then be an action taker from what you learn. Man, I love that. Okay. So all of this learning, I know coaches have played a big role in your life. Why don't you kind mm -hmm. of talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, man. Like the biggest thing that enabled me to the first thing that I transformed radically in my life was my body. I, I briefly mentioned it earlier. And I tried so many times to, tr to like lose weight, to gain muscle and like feel confident in my body. But I would always have this thing where I would start working out, I would start eating healthy, but it would only last for like four weeks at most six weeks. And then I would quit. I'd quit. I'd, I'd like I'd lose interest. I'd move on something. It would be inconvenient or whatever. The difference came when I decided to hire my first coach. My first coach was a fitness coach, an online fitness coach, actually. And it was through like the accountability that he provided me that I actually not only began the transformation, but finished it. And I realized like in my business too, and maybe we'll, we'll get into this, this is actually a really important point of the story last February, a year ago. Um, what shifted me from being a coach who like made a thousand dollars or just kind of coached on the side to one that was doing it full time was when I hired a coach, like a business coach who was doing it full time, who frankly had the result that I wanted in his, in his life, in his own business. And so it's like a lot of people think that, you know, I can get the result of myself. I don't need anybody else's help. I can just read a book on it and you can, the only difference is how much time do you want it to take? Like, do you want it to be fast or do you want it to, to have the feeling that, oh, I did it all myself and I didn't need anybody? You know what I'm saying, Chris? So coach, coaches are the shortcut, for lack of a Co better term. They'll speed it right up for you. That's right. They're, they're the shortcut. They're, the experts that guide you through the process are what make you get the result faster. And so for me, I remember even being broke a year ago. And like sleeping on the floor of my mom's friend's house, it was just kind of like my last stop, you know, before I would end up back in my car again. And um, I remember thinking to myself, like, I really need a coach, just like for my body I did two years ago. I need a coach now. And yet I don't have the money. I don't have the money. And I had the thought, like many coaches do, which is the first thing that I'll do is I'll go and get some clients. I'll go ahead and get some more clients, and then I'll use the money to pay for the coach. But isn't that funny? Like, that's the exact reason why I needed the coach. Like, I needed the coach because I didn't have enough clients already coming in the door. Like, that was the problem. So what I decided to do is, like, whatever it takes, I'm going to, like, borrow money from my dad. I'm going to take every last bit of money from my previous door-to-door -door sales job, which was coming in. My next check was coming in that Friday. And I'm going to invest everything. Like, even if I don't have enough money to eat, I'm going to put my last dollar into this. 
into learning how to coach, into a business coach, because I knew that the most valuable asset that I could invest in would not be like, for me, it wasn't like putting money in savings. It wasn't putting money into like a car or anything like that. It was my mindset because if I could invest in my mind, then I knew that I could generate income on demand in the future. And so that's what hiring a coach did for me is it got me a different result far faster than I could have figured it out on my own. So that's when you found out coaching is going to accelerate your growth, therefore accelerate your income, accelerate your impact. You've got a great story. I mean, you are every aspect of your story has these little twists and turns. Tell me about the time where you had to sign up for coaching and you had to keep mm -hmm. your word in terms of oh, the amount that you committed. What did you do? Yeah. Yeah. So I remember uh, a year ago today, I made $1,000 in coaching, which is just enough to like pay a little bit of gas bills, make some money for food. I hired my coach, which is borrowing money from my dad. It was, it was um, like I said, taking the last payment from my previous job um, and investing in a coach. Then in March of last year, I made about four thousand dollars in coaching. So it it made I helped I made a lot more money that month than I had in previous months. But I needed to pay off some debts because all my credit cards were maxed out, a bunch of personal debts. I paid a bunch of them off and got enough money for rent. But what came next is my next payment. I owed another payment to that coach. It was twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, and this was at the end of March, and I I remember this moment so vividly because I had a moment where I was like, I can either quit working with this coach because I don't have enough money to pay him his next payment. Or I could find out like what, are, what my other options are. I looked at my bank account, I had nothing. I, my credit cards were still maxed out. I couldn't borrow any more money from my dad or anyone else. And so I'm like, what have I got left? The only thing that I had left was my car. And I remember so clearly, like what does the car represent? If you could just put one word in it, what does the car represent? Freedom. The ability to get around freedom. Exactly. And so I looked at my car and I said, this is my freedom. But then I questioned myself, is that really true? You see what a car is, is the illusion of freedom. It's the illusion of physical freedom, right? But then I thought to myself, I can keep this car and keep what is the illusion of freedom. Or perhaps I could sell this car. And with the money that I create from it, I could gain what is true freedom by investing once more, finally, into my mindset. Can you guess what I did? <laughs> Tell them. I sold that car. I sold my car, which is the last asset I had, and I took that money and I invested it to make the second payment into my coach for April, for the beginning of April. Absolutely blows my mind. The first time I heard you tell that story, I got chills, and I got them again this time. It... How many people out there would really go as far as to sell their only car that <laughs> happens to also be where they sleep? So it's like selling your car and your home mm -hmm. in order to keep up payments on a coach that they know is going to make a difference in giving them real freedom. And that is having a business and revenue and income and all that. That's that's I mean, that's what it was for me, man. It's like I hear so many people say that I can't. You know, I, I don't have the money. I can't. And then, and then I just, I tell them this story and I say like, you don't have to sell your car, right? Cause no one does like my story doesn't have to be yours, but what they need to see in that is that everyone has options. Like when people, so many people say I can't sell my car. What's well, like, well, I thought that too. But then I realized like, this is the most important thing for me to have my dream. So it's worth it. The next month I went on to make $12,000. So I went from fourth K to 12 K. So it was no problem. You know, since then, I actually still haven't bought a car because like I just use Uber <laughs> to get around. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's almost like not having a car has be become your, your symbol of strength. I, I wonder how long <laughs> you'll go without actually buying one. I mean, I don't have any incentive, any desire for a car, honestly, at this point. It's it, like it feels good to not have one. But the thing is, is like since that time, my income is progressively it, it, it stayed the same for about a few months, like 12 to 15 K for a few months. And then it radically shot up. But I think that like the car was kind of like me holding on to my old way of life. It was kind of holding on to like, I have to have like, it was kind of like my old, the old Sterling would have said, I need the car. But the new Sterling said like, all I need is what's in my mind. And that was the, that was what enabled me to grow exponentially. Incredible story. I know, I know so many people are probably going to take radical moves in their life to make their business dream come true simply from that story alone. So thank you for sharing that.
So Welcome. now you've moved from being an online fitness coach to somebody mm -hmm. that is a coach of coaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk us yeah. through that. Yeah, I, me I remember in July of last year when I, I was making like six figures. Of like really, I was making between sixteen and twenty k a month. And um, I wasn't like talking about my income numbers, but people could see that I was being successful because my the means that I I built my business was without email marketing, paid ads, or funnel. It was just it was an untraditional way. I just figured out creatively how to do something different. And people just started asking me, well, how did you do it? How did you do it? How did you do it? Like, I need to do this too. I want to be a coach. I want to be successful too. And the shift came for me. Like I was at first I was like, no, like I'm gonna keep these secrets to myself. Like I want to keep all this. I don't want anyone else doing this. But then I realized like real success comes to people that help make other people successful. And like if I want to be able to grow my own wealth, my own impact in the world, why do I feel that I have to do it all myself? Like uh, if I actually believe in coaching, if I believe that coaching is the best means for the world to be transformed, then why wouldn't I want to help other coaches be successful too? It's like multiplying my own efforts. So I made that shift in, in July and well, really it was August that I made the shift. And it's like, I realized at that moment that that was far more fulfilling. I loved fitness coaching I, because I loved the effect of seeing an entrepreneur with a transformed body, but I far more love helping coaches become successful in business because I know, or I believe that nothing helps the world get better. Like nothing promotes world peace more than people getting exactly what they want in their life. And the work of a coach is simply to help people get more of what they want, to commit to having more of what they want. So I want to help more people become like profitable in helping others transform. That's my mission now. So in making that shift, that was like a radical shift in like a mindset is like, if I want to be successful, it's not just keeping all my tricks and tips to myself. It's giving them away freely. That makes a difference. I love that. Lori and I call that an attitude of abundance. And when you yeah. realize there's enough to go around, then you suddenly see that you see the abundance everywhere. And so when you stop hoarding and start sharing everything, you know, because you're sharing, then it all comes right back to you because people want to share right back to you. And so you end up mm -hmm. with 10x or 100x or 1,000x what you were first hoarding. I absolutely love that. That's your attitude, attitude of abundance. So let's talk about a, a, a tougher question. You're rather mm -hmm. new in the coaching arena. And there would be some people to say, wow, this has been a, a pretty short journey of success. Who are you to be coaching coaches already? Do you ever struggle with that? Thank you so much for that question. Thank you so much. And, and I think that just like anyone, I wake up some days and I'm like, man, like, am I really qualified to do this? Can I really help people? Or is there going to be someone that like finds me out or something? Like, I, I mean, I don't know if other people deal with that, but I know that I do. And it's like kind of feeling like being called out as a fraud or something. But I realized this, like when I have that thought come up, I think to myself, am I actually making a difference? Like instead of just having a random thought, like what is, what are the results say? And all I have to do is, is like think of one of my clients, Dan, who like went from personal training, making 30 K a year. And then he, in the first two and a half weeks of working with me, he made 15 K, you know, it's like, which is more money than he ever dreamed to make. Now he's making multiple in his business. It's like, I think to myself, who are the actual people that I've, that I've helped? And the, the way that the way that you can ask yourself, like, am I actually qualified to teach others is with what I'm doing capable of working for other people. I knew that what I was doing wasn't attached to me. It wasn't about Sterling, but it was just a system that worked. And so when I could get beyond like my own self-conscious fears of like, you know, am I good enough, which is just like keeping me from sharing the abundance, keeping me from helping other people become successful, then it's like, then I could help make then I can help people like Dan or people like Eric or Johnny. I could go down the list of share all the people that, uh, that I've helped. But the thing is, this is the, I guess the, the key principle that I want people to take away. Like what is it that determines a, an expert or an authority in a field? Like what makes you an authority or expert? I mean, what do you think, Chris? You know, I think what makes you an authority or an expert is if you've had success in that area. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, some people feel like, oh, I'm not an expert till someone deems me an expert. And mm. I feel like, eh, you're an expert to somebody. There's always somebody that wants what you have. There's always somebody that wants to be doing what you're doing. So as long as you have verifiable success, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be as big as somebody else. As long as you have verifiable success that other people look up to, that makes you 
an expert in some sort of that field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So an expert for me, exactly. I'm right on, I'm on the way. And I just worded it a little bit differently. Same idea. The person who's an expert is the person who's created the results. So it doesn't matter what piece of paper you have, whose signature is on it. The only thing that makes you an authority or an expert is, do I have the result that somebody else wants for themselves? Wow. Do I have the result that somebody else wants for themselves? If I do, I'm an expert. Wow, I love that. So this is something that you said you're not sure if other people struggle with. Trust me, everybody struggles with this at every level. I struggle with these types of blocks as well. You know, who are you to be doing this? Or who are you to, to do that? Or why would people want this from you? Everybody mm -hmm. does. And I think you really summed it up so well when you said the answer is simple. Who am I to be doing this? Well, if I'm making a difference, then that is why I'm doing this. That is why I have the ability to do this. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. What other blocks do you have? Have you cleared them all up or do you still have some you're working on? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. One of the blocks that I'm currently working on is that I'm currently working on clearing is like taking what I do again and again and like putting it in a process where it doesn't require my personal time to deliver it. I've been like pretty attached with my first year in coaching and I'm kind of like even I know that I'm feeling embarrassed like saying this right now, but I've been kind of like attached to delivering the coaching to like where I can help each coach become successful, like personally spending the time working with them one on one again and again and again. And because it's like it's not cheap to work with me, you know, people pay several thousand dollars to work with me to to uh, to get into my world and for me to teach them my system. But then I've been like so attached to continually giving up my time for um, each coach. So the block I'm currently working on is releasing that, realizing that I don't have to do it all myself, that people can get the result with or without my time. Like the, one of the biggest things that coaches – that I think hurt coaches is their belief that I need to – like my clients need my time to get the results. And I still deal with this. Instead, they like they don't like the clients just need the system, the process that gets them the results with or without time. Time is a variable. It's not necessary. And so like the next step for me is like just taking everything that I've learned and, and teach and putting it inside of a process where people can just like go step one, do this, step two, do that. And I, they don't have to actually like have me doing it personally. They can just see a video or listen to an audio and guide them through it that way. So that's a huge block for me is like letting go of the attachment to each person working with me using my time. You know, I certainly understand that attachment, but I would offer this to you. If your role in this world is to touch and improve as many lives as possible, then it's up to you to have other methods of delivering your coaching so that you can then reach the masses as opposed to trading your time for money. Because when you trade mm. your time for money, of course, what do you run out of? Time. Time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I love that you're working on that. So what are your future goals? I mean, where are you taking this thing? Yeah, man. So my ultimate goal is like my vision for my life is to help make personal development and more importantly, specifically transformation more accessible and fun to the masses, like accessible and fun to everyone. I love the work of people like Tony Robbins. Like you've never been to one of his events, right? Or no, have I, you? Actually, I have. And we're going to get in about a month. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, what Tony does at his events, like he tries as best he can to make it fun, right? Mm -hmm. Like he wants, he's got people jumping around. He's given, he's having you give high fives and hugs and massages to random strangers. Like he wants it to be fun. And so my thing is like, how can I make my whole mission is how can I make transformation people getting exactly what they want, the most fun, the most accessible thing to everyone. So to that effect, I want to create events in the future that you utilize technology, like virtual reality, like augmented reality where people can actually have an experience which is kind of like a video game as they transform it's like people you can gamify transformation so I, don't, I, I don't mean to be super esoteric but the vision for this is like somewhere between are, are you familiar with peter diamandis and his work of yes. like exponential technology yep. so it would be like it would be like combining the work of peter diamandis and tony robbins into events into programs to, so that people like love think it's super fun to become the best version of themselves. Wow. The world needs that. I can't wait to kind of watch you on your journey and, and watch you accomplish that. And I love that. Thank Making you, transformation fun and accessible. I actually just jotted that down. What a great mission. So Thank obviously you, you're making impact. 
And For the Love of Money, the podcast, is all about people that make impact thanks to their success. And so Mm. my question to you is this. How is the world a better place right now because you've turned it around and become successful? Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Like, I love this question because, like, I think that the only way a person can become profitable is to become so much better at adding value to others. Like the way that you get rich is by helping other people get exactly what they want. So for me, like my favorite thing is hearing the story of a guy like Eric who went from being a trainer making, you know, $2,500 a month to making $7,500 a month. And then hearing the stories of his clients, because if Eric is still just working one-to-one, working with his his personal training clients in person every single day, getting paid $30 an hour for his work, working his butt off and just barely making it, then he's not able to work with like his client, Kristen, who lives across the country. And in just a few minutes a week, he's seeing her lose like 20 pounds a month and just like achieve her ideal body. You know, it's like, it's hearing the stories of my client's clients where they're transforming, they're becoming a better version of themselves. They're feeling more fulfilled that make like those stories are what, make me so happy to continue to do what I do and expand the work. It's like when I hear not only my clients who are making great money and having fun doing what they're doing, but their results for their, their, their clients results. That's what gets me jazzed. Like that's what, that's what fuels me. You're dropping so many nuggets. I wrote down again. You're only profitable if you're adding massive value. Absolutely yes. loved it. And here, I mean, really, here's what I see you doing. The world's a better place because you're creating this butterfly effect. You, you cleaned up your own life and you got fit and you became wealthy and then you taught others how to do that. And now they're teaching oh. others how to have a fit or a healthy or a wealthy life. And it's literally creating this butterfly effect that would not exist. And who knows how deep that's going to go. I mean, thousands mm-hmm. and thousands and thousands of people deep simply because you had your shifting moment from, I don't want to be homeless anymore and I can do something about this. Yes. Absolutely yes. incredible. All right. So let me, before I ask you the last question, before I ask you the last question, let me ask you, where mm-hmm. can we find you? There's gonna be people that are going to be clamoring to get a hold of you. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. If you, if you'd like to follow me or get connected, you can uh, go to my website, sterlinggriffin.com. And I have a lot of people ask me like, cause I do high ticket coaching and things like that. And if any people that work with you or follow you, Chris are are coaches and they just want to get access to my script, like my sales script that I literally use just in my sales calls, then they can just go to sterlinggriffin.com slash script. This is the amalgamation of like everything I learned from so many teachers, so many coaches and use it to make multiple six figures in my first year of coaching. They can just get that for free. So sterlinggriffin.com slash script. Dude, what an awesome gift you're giving everybody. Like somebody, all they need is access to people and your script and they can start making money. That's it, dude. Seriously. <laughs> like you just read it. Like literally you just read it and you ask the questions and you use the process. It works. Like that's what Dan used to make 15 K. That's what another client Johnny made his first month of coaching made 12 K. You know, it's like, it's, it's like magic. It really is, man. I love it. Okay. So here is the last question. I ask everybody this question. I'm always so curious to hear the answers. A lot of people have blocks around money. A lot of people mm-hmm. either don't feel deserving of it or they feel like money is evil or they feel like only the greedy get it or, mm. you know, th- there's all sorts of blocks around money. So my question to you is this, why should people be unapologetic about their pursuit of wealth and success? Ah, yes. If you want to become wealthy and you want to stay wealthy, so not just flash in the pan, make a few dollars or make a few hundred thousand dollars or whatever, but stay wealthy realize that you have to become a far better person yourself and be able to help more people than you are if you're poor. Like the reason why people are poor or rich is because like, what's the difference? The difference is that rich people are actually helping others on a massive scale. So the reason what, why I'm motivated to make my, you know, it's a, it's a half a million dollar business in its current form. It'll be a seven figure business and beyond by the end of the year, this year, 2017 is, and it's not like my lifestyle will change at all as I go to a million dollars and then I make $10 million and a hundred million dollars and all that. My lifestyle probably won't change all that much, but what the reason why I'm still motivated is because I know that those numbers just reflect people's lives changing. Like I'm motivated 
to grow my own wealth because I know that it will require me to become a far better person at adding value to others. I know that if I'm making a million, I'm helping more people than if I'm making, you know, 50,000. If I'm making 10 million, I'm helping more people. I'm helping others transform, get more of what they want than if I'm making a million dollars. So I am so motivated. I'm so passionate about becoming rich and helping other people get rich because I know that it makes the world a better place because I'm going to give more. I'm going to love more. I'm going to serve more in a bigger way. And that's the only way that I can get rich and stay rich. Being rich means you have become a wonderful, giving, loving person. Yes, I love it. That sums it up perfectly. Sterling, you knocked out of the park, my friend. I am so grateful. And, and quite honestly, the listeners are going to be beyond grateful to get all these nuggets. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me on the show. I respect and honor you and the work that you're doing here with this podcast, bro. You're amazing. Right back at you, buddy. All right, well, listen, I'm sure I'll see you in the next couple of days. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, man. Talk to you soon. Take care of yourself. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success. 